history as a truth versus history as documentation. History is a compilation of events that occurred in the past. Living in the present time, we cannot personally experience any event that has already happened. However, we can glean a good idea about what happened in the past by studying history books, relics, and historic sites. There are two types of history, history as a truth and history as documentation. History as a truth is all about facts that forever remain unchanged, while history as documentation can be different depending on the viewpoint of the person who wrote it. How did historians view history? Leopold van Rank. The historian has to determine and state only historical facts. To do that, it's important to exclude their own thoughts and objectively reveal what the past was like. Let historical facts speak only for themselves. Benedetto Croce. Human perception is an important part of history what actually happened only remains in history through human thought. In other words, only what humans think, reflect, and explore according to their mental needs becomes true history. Edward Hallett Carr. History is constant conversation between the past and the present. Neither the historical facts nor the historian's point of view are unilaterally important. What happened in the past and the historian living in the present must interact. History research methods differ depending on the historical materials. When studying prehistoric times that have no written records available, archaeological and anthropological research methods are utilized to scientifically analyze relics and historic sites from those periods. When studying the history of times when written records were available, the method of reading and deciphering these written records, in addition to various methods of excavating and researching relics and historic sites, are used. When researching records, one has to make sure to examine them with a critical eye because the records are filtered through the viewpoints and opinions of those who recorded them. When exploring history, one must meticulously research and critically analyze historic facts based on historic resources. In addition, one must assume a self-directed learning attitude so that one can establish one's own viewpoints regarding history. Where can traces of humanity be found before the invention of the letters? Just as we can guess that someone came to school before us by looking at the footprints on the snow-covered playground, we can guess what happened long ago if the evidence is clear. We can infer things about the people who lived before the invention of writing by looking at artifacts and ruins. Relics are objects left behind by humans in the past and generally refer to earthenware, stoneware, and metalwork that can be transported due to their small shape. Ruins are places where humans lived in the past and refer to dwellings and tombs that are large in shape and cannot be relocated. Humanity moves throughout the world. It is estimated that the first human ancestors appeared on Earth about four million years ago. Australopithecus operensis who lived in southeastern Africa, is believed to be the first human species because, unlike apes, A. afarensis could walk, stand on two legs, and use their hands to make tools. Homo erectus, who lived about 1.8 million years ago in various parts of Africa, Europe, and Asia, used fire to cook food and also used language. About 200,000 years ago, 
Homo sapiens, which are considered the ancestor of modern human beings, made their first appearance in Africa and spread all over the world. They developed different physical characteristics according to the natural environment of each region and eventually evolved into various races. Who were the first humans? The first human was excavated in the Afar district of Ethiopia in 1974. It was named Lucy after the lyrics of a Beatles song that the excavation team enjoyed listening to. Lucy was found to be an adult woman, 107 centimeters tall and weighing 28 kilograms. A larger skull was found nearby, presumed to be male and called Lucian. Lucy lived about 3.18 million years ago and walked upright. Despite the controversy surrounding the appearance and brain are close to chimpanzees, and that only 28% of the human skeleton was located, it has been called the first human. Later in 1992, Artie was discovered near the area where Lucy was found, and Lucy made way for Artie as the first human specimen. Artie lived about 4.4 million years ago, walked upright, and is believed to have been able to grasp things. The Paleolithic Age of Hunting and Food Gathering During the Old Stone Age, which is also known as the Paleolithic Age, humans created stone tools made by breaking stones. At first, they used simple multifunctional pebble choppers, but later they created more diverse stone tools for various purposes. For example, they used pebble chopper and hand axe when hunting larger games, and scraper and end scraper when chopping and cooking food. They were nomadic because they had to travel to hunt, gather food, and fish. Mostly, they lived in huts, caves, and rock overhangs, and left paintings of animals on the cave walls wishing for successful hunting, abundance, and fertility. Some of the most famous Paleolithic cave paintings can be found in Lascaux Cave in France and the cave of Altamira, Spain. What did the Paleolithic people's paintings mean? There are more than 200 caves with murals from the Paleolithic Age in Europe, and most of them are distributed in France and Spain. Among them, the murals in Lascaux Cave and Altamira Cave are works of art left by the Crobagnans. About 800 paintings were found in Lascaux Cave, varying in size from 1 to 5 meters. Shaman, bison, horse, deer, and goats are represented Seeing that animals are represented in conjunction with arrows and traps, it seems that the pictures contain the magical meaning of hoping for a successful hunt. Animals such as mammoths, bison, and deer are also represented on the murals in the cave of Altamira. The description is vivid and three-dimensional, and the colors are beautiful. The Neolithic Period of Farming and Livestock Homo sapiens migrated out of Africa to Eurasia, where they hunted large animals, including mammoth. The last ice age came to an end roughly 10,000 years ago, and the temperature and sea levels began to rise. The population of large animals declined rapidly, and the melting glaciers allowed rivers to flow over the fields. Humans adapted to these changing natural environments by hunting animals such as reindeer or living near the sea, catching fish and shellfish for food. They also started creating and using polished tools and pottery, and their food sources began to include farming and livestock in addition to hunting and fishing. This period is called the Neolithic period or the New Stone Age. Agriculture started in Southeast Asia and spread throughout the world. During this period, 
humans cultivated land with stone picks, grew crops such as wheat, barley, millet, sorghum, soybeans, and others, and harvested them using sickles made of stones or bones. The harvested crops were processed with polished stone implements, such as stone mills. The humans of this age also made pottery to cook food and store crops. The great changes that happened in people's lifestyles as the result of producing food through farming and livestock are collectively referred to as the Neolithic Revolution. Who built Stonehenge? Stonehenge is made up of about 80 massive standing stones that are two to seven meters tall and 50 tons each. The massive weight and nature of the arrangement made some theorists believe that it must have been built by aliens. Some people suggest that it is related to the dolmen culture of Manchuria and the Korean Peninsula because studies have shown that the remains buried in graves around Stonehenge are of Asian origin. Meanwhile, dolmens similar to those found in the Korean Peninsula have also been found in various parts of England as well.